and uh, thanks for running these events. So I've known Rick for help a brother out eight years. It's a long time. So eight years, and and since I've known Rick, he's run this. He's run Be Responsive. He does a bunch of stuff for the community. Sorry. I'm okay. Yeah, no, I'm okay. Um, and we worked together at a couple of different places at a startup, I think, in an agency. Or was it? Did we work at it? Sputnik. Yeah. And BJ. BJ. Yeah, so both agencies. And he's done an amazing job for the community. So thank you for having me along tonight. Um, so well, you touched on some really interesting words. I love that talk. It was really, really good. The, um, the thing that I, I, I'm really passionate about is that everyone in this room is a designer. So... For me to get up and, and talk about design, I think is a bit of a furphy because I'm no more qualified than anyone else here to talk about design. So <clears throat> the good thing about everyone being a designer is that everything in this world is design. And like you said, some things are consciously designed and some things unconsciously are designed and some things are neglected and not designed at all. So we've got an incredible power and I think that, you know, it's a really, really, really big big exciting buzzword and there's so many jobs out there at the moment and when I'm in industry the first question everyone asks is like what is design and then the second question I don't want to talk about that because there's a million you know different talks about that I want to talk about the next thing I get asked which is what what is your design process and this is like the first thing I get asked okay and luckily I, I spent five years at Monash and twenty five thousand dollars to learn how to answer this question so you sort of you get on the Googles, and which didn't exist when I went to uni. You had to use books. You get on there and you sort of you punch in the question there and you sort of hit down, I'm feeling lucky. And then something like this turns up, right? And this is pretty awesome. This is from the D school. These guys sort of they didn't really create design thinking, but they popularized it, right? And there's like all these cool steps. So, you know, it's one, two, three, four, five, five step process. You know, you empathize, which you talked about, you know, talk to users, which is awesome. And they define I get do some testing on users. That's super awesome, right? Anyone can do that. And then, you know, there's all these other ones. There's this one, which is IDEO. Everyone's heard of IDEO. They're pretty awesome. I, I really like this one, right? Because this is sort of like your emotional roller coaster as you design. It's like you get engaged by a client, you get really excited. And then, you know, about a month in, you realize whatever you've built is never going to make it to market. You sort of, you know, plunge into this <laughs> well of despair here. And then you get towards the end of the project and you're like, thank God this is over. And then down here, you sort of like, Shit, I have to find another job. <laughs> and then, you know, you've got these guys, IBM. Does anyone here work for IBM? Good. <laughs> so, you know, they've got this really awesome design process. I love IBM, you know, Paul Rand. Look at that. It's an I. That's a B. Yeah, anyway. So, <laughs> just a letter N. <laughs> really great design work. Anyway, so, you know, you start, like, start somewhere. You start... And then you go and then you come around and then you keep going. And this is really good, right? Because you never leave the company. You keep consulting and you keep coming back and you keep charging. So I love this model. This is great if you, if you work in consulting because it never ends. And then, you know, if I'm like on a date, I'll be like, wow. Well, you know, I'll bring out the diamonds, the double diamonds. And these ones are pretty awesome, you know. Good cut, good colour. The clarity is not great, but, you know, you take what you can get, right? And then there's more, there's like this one, this is awesome, this one's a squiggle. I especially like this one because like when people ask about my design process, I can draw it really quickly and do this. It's awesome. And you know, you can be like, well, you know, we're here and you want to get to here. And everyone nods because they go, oh, shit, it's bad. It's bad in there, right? So, and I, I joke, but this is really, really important. It's important to have a process, right? It's important to be able to articulate our craft and talk about, you know, how we're going to be, go about doing these things. So, so I belittle it, but, but you know, it is, it is important. It's important for when you're working in agency, right? You want to go to a client and the client's got all this money and they've got a problem and they come to you and they're like really worried that you're not going to be able to solve the problem. But you bring out the process and you're like, you're here. You want to get to here, come with us on the process. And it's kind of awesome and, you know, people buy it and that's great. And then you work in like big corporates, like Rick said, where I am at the moment and, you know, they're building all this stuff. And you go, you guys, why are you building all this stuff? You know, you're not, you're building things right, but you're not building the right things. Let's, let's talk to our consumers and let's empathize and go through this journey and hopefully we'll end up doing some good work. And then, you know, I've worked for General Assembly and other teaching places like Monash. I actually spent, somebody asked about like doctors and this sort of thing. I actually spent a lot of time 
talking to doctors about empathy and why it's important to empathize with your patients. And they're all like, really? This is amazing. What is happening? Anyway, General Assembly, like, you know, you've got all these kids or not kids, adults that come in and they're looking to change their careers or upskill and they need somewhere to start. And process is a really great place to start, right? Because it's, it's really accessible. It's really definable. It, it's easy to get a hot handle of. But, you know, if we spend all this time thinking about what the process is, like what are the steps, what are the things, what are the hard things, we sometimes forget about the why, we forget about the how, we forget about us being designers, like what do we bring to the process? Is it science or is it art? Is it, is it quantifiable or is it, like, mysterious? Yeah. So I like to think about it like music, right? Who likes no effects? <laughs> Who's never heard of no effects? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so old. Oh my God. Anyway, I had to explain to a, a designer in my team the other day what a CD was. Like, just like fucking crazy. Anyway, so here we go. It's a lot like music, right? So I can go, who here plays a musical, musical instrument, specifically guitar? You play guitar, right, Rick? I bet $100, maybe $50, <laughs> that if you give me a guitar and 12 chances, I can play any note you mention. Right? Uh, <laughs> probably, right? <laughs> Still $50. I don't know. Rick's probably got an interesting guitar, some sort of technical <laughs> technology guitar. Anyway, so, so, you know, if you ask, but if you ask me, to, I can play any note, but if you ask me to play a song, then it's stuck, then it's suck, right? And I, I learned guitar for years and it's still suck. So this is like unintentional design, right? This is someone who's going about creating a process or a system or a product who doesn't really understand the, the process, right? The fundamentals. And then you start thinking about like, okay, so we, what if we train these designers? What if we taught them about process? So if you took me away for a day or a week or a month or whatever it happens to be and we, we had a guitar lesson, I could probably, you know, I could probably play first go every note, hopefully, in 10 weeks, right? I could probably play a song, right? I could probably play something simple. But, and you're laughing because you know I couldn't, but I might. I might be able to. But... um. You know, I wouldn't be able to play my own music, right? I'd be able to play someone else's music. And I, I, I think about, like, designers and graduate designers and the designers that we have and a lot of people in management who haven't got a design background or haven't practised it, they're in this sort of mode, right? They, they understand the notes and they can play other people's music, but they don't have that, that sort of that creativity, that spark. So, so how, do we, how do we move beyond process? How do, we, how do we stop thinking about, like, design as being quantifiable and scientific? And for me, that, that sort of amounts to mindset. And I've spent a lot of time in, in those sort of industries and, and, and trying to replicate successful results. And for me, there's three things that, that I look for in designers or that I try and teach designers or that, that I try and imbue in organisations that I work in. The first thing is sort of... Empathy, and again, you touched on this, and it's in all the things, so that's good because it kind of makes sense, right? So it's about empathising in everything you do. So we're, we're kind of at the stage now where as developers or designers or working in industry, we understand we're not our users, we've got to talk to our users. And, you know, we might do an interview and we, we'll talk to this lady about, you know, her phone or her app or whatever it is that she's using. And, you know, for bonus points, if you're a service designer or a customer experience designer or whatever you want to call it, you might follow her around for a day and see what she does, like, in store. And that, that, that's kind of cool, right? Today I took a photo in a, in a meeting at OzPost. No one hears from OzPost, though, so I think if someone said that. Don't tell anyone I took this photo because there's stuff on the screens that you're not supposed to see, apparently. But um, who's been in a meeting like this? Everyone's been in a meeting like this. What's wrong with this fucking meeting? Somebody, please tell me. Sorry? Everybody's using their computer. Everybody's on a computer, right? Everybody's got one or two, two screens, right? Well, not the guys with DHPs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. There's no buzz pump stickers on the back of those laptops. That's another problem. <laughs> but um, what's going on here is, like, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about our users, right, and really trying to empathise with our users. But we spend very little time empathising about our product teams and the people we work with. How, the, how does that person feel that's presenting, right? Nobody is paying attention to that. And this is really, really important because, you know, we've, we've got to practise what we preach. Um, you talked about, like, somebody talked about seeing the, the mail crossing signs every day, and I don't care because it doesn't make a difference, Right. But if you see that thing day in, day out, if you're a transgender person and, and you see male or female and that's the only selection you see day in, day out, that wears down on you. And if you have, like, 
you know, the neurons in your brain, if you keep cycling these sort of, these sort of um, triggers and this sort of process, that stuff gets baked into the way you think. And that, that's, a, that's a really big danger. So if you want to be a really good designer, and we're all designers, remember, so we all want to be really good, you've got to not only empathise with your users but empathise with everyone because you want to create good habits. So the first thing, empathy. Now, the second thing that I look for in designers that I try and teach, and you'll laugh at this, Rick, because you know I'm not always positive, but try and be positive and optimistic with everything you do. So being professionals, and, and, and like you mentioned before, we are professionals. We're very good at the things that we do, hopefully, or we're, we're better than the average person. But with that, proficiency becomes, becomes like a risk, right? So the better you get at something, the less you can see excitement or joy or the opportunity in the thing that you're working through. So a really great example of this, and this is something that you've got to look forward to, Rick. This is my daughter on the weekend. Pretty awesome. Putting her to work. There she is painting. She's having a bowl. We did it for about an hour. She thought it was the best thing ever. This is her uh, today bringing in the bins. Pretty awesome. I've waited two years to actually start getting some payoff for having this little munchkin around. <laughs> Pretty awesome. <laughs> Here she is on the weekend, sweeping the deck. <laughs> Good job. So other than like being incredibly cruel, <laughs> this is sort of showing something which, which is called uh, Shoshin. So she's Japanese, so that works out really well. Nice tone. Is anyone here Japanese? No? Is a little bit? Did someone say a little bit? <laughs> what, is it? <laughs> what does it mean? It's a, it's a thing. Oh, sorry. It's sorry. Isn't it faith? Faith, maybe. Down the back, someone's got this. First resolution. First resolution, yeah. So, oh, oh yeah, go again. So that, yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's actually the uh, first uh, uh, your feeling when you start something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. You know she's Korean, right? She's just white. I lost Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'll keep moving. So basically, this means, this means a beginner's mindset. So the idea being that when you approach a problem or when you approach a, an opportunity, you're optimistic, right? She has no idea this is manual labour. She has no idea that's a bin that I don't want to take out. <laughs> She has no idea that I hate doing this and that I didn't want to do this, so I'm making her do it and I'm taking it. She thinks it's amazing. This is the best thing ever, right? So if we can approach the, the challenges and the problems we have with that sort of beginner's mindset, take and initially when you start, eventually, yes, you're going to have to bring in constraints because we're going to have to build something. But I want to work with people who approach every problem with that sort of mindset. Like this is the first thing that they've looked at and this is going to be amazing. And not only that, like if you work with people like that, your work is so much more enjoyable. What is worse than turning up to a developer's meeting and the developer's like, can't do it, can't do it, no, can't do it, no, can't do it. It's, it's horrible, right? So start with this. <laughs> lastly, because everything good comes in threes, maybe. Um, lastly, as designers, I believe the mindset, one of the most important mindsets we can bring to bear is the fact that whatever we're building is not going to be the final solution. We're on a journey on our way to that final solution. We're trying and we're trying and we're trying and we're trying again. You can't have a talk about mindset without bringing up this chick. If you haven't seen a, a TED talk, um, check it out. There's a bit of conjecture around whether or not She's statistically accurate in some of her studies and whether or not the things she says is true or not. But I, I do believe that one of the things that she fundamentally believes in is the power of not yet. So when somebody works on something and you get the, the result, her, her, her concept is that instead of praising them for the end result and praising them for how smart they are and, and, and the outcomes, praise them for the journey, praise them for the work that they go on. Because the next time that they approach a problem which is difficult or hard, they won't give up, they'll keep working through it. And she can explain it a lot better than I can. But what I think is really, really important is that we, we celebrate the work, we don't celebrate the outcomes. And in my teams that I've run and, and people that I've worked with, I try to steer away from that. We always have, you know, personal limitation reviews and you talk about what you've got and you look at like in marketing, you talk about uplift and eyeballs and all this sort of thing. But very rarely do we as designers think about our, our process. And we might look at, you know, process is the wrong word. We look at the way or the journey that we've gone on as we've gone through this, this sort of design process. 
recursive process again. Anyway, I think it's really, really important to think about not yet, to think about that journey we're on as people discovering design. So I wanted to make this really short because there were three speakers and I was hoping to speak last so we could go to the pub and I was going to wrap this up really quickly, but now we've only got two, I've, I've rabbited on a bit. Forty minutes of questions. Forty <laughs> <laughs> So, so process is a really great way to start with design. It's great to start if you are the designer. It's a great way to start teaching design. But we are really, really doing ourselves a disservice if we don't think about the mindset that we bring to bear when we're working on these problems or opportunities. And it's not just for like designers who get paid with design in their title. It's for software developers, for testers, it's for managers, for everyone who creates a product or service. Um, so I'd encourage everyone here. Now, this is, this is the mindset that I bring to design and this is what I've seen success with. But I'd encourage everyone here to sort of take a minute and sort of step back and think about, you know, how can you be more effective? And then after you've gone through and done, you know, one process and one sort of deliverable or one product or service, sort of take, take a second to step back and think about how you approach the problem and why you approach the problem and iterate on that, not just your process. Cool. So thanks for listening to me, Rabbit Island. Thank you.